Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to part 8 of the Slither.io tutorial series in Scratch. In today's episode, we have a lot of fun planned with uh, detecting collisions between some of our sprites and then also adding a crosshair and some more uh, animations to make this snake run a little bit more uh, smooth. So let's check out what we have so far. We have a game, uh, obviously, and you can see that our snake is a little bit laggy because I'm recording, but it should be fine on your end. Um, and you can see that it can collect our food. We have floating food as well um, and boundary system. So yeah, pretty cool. So let's get started. Um, the first thing we wanna do is check whenever our special food, the one that flies, touches our boundary because obviously we want to um, do some code there so that it either deletes or it moves in a different direction. So uh, what I've found that works is, let's bring this here, um, is just making it delete. I think that's just a really easy way to do it. Um, and so I can add this code here and I can say if touching sprite four, which is gonna be our boundary, I can do the same thing, um, except I don't wanna be changing my length, right? Because we don't wanna be rewarding the user uh, because this is a random event and they didn't really earn it if you wanna think about that, uh, if you wanna think about it in that way. So uh, what I wanted to do this episode is also introduce um, adding new blocks and creating our own blocks because you can see that we have some pretty repetitive code here. Uh, we're doing basically the same thing except one is changing length by uh, five and the other one isn't. Yet we're writing all of the blocks and we're doing all the blocks uh, twice. And so it's actually kind of a bad practice to be doing this just because we wanna be saving space um, and real estate on our kind of code palette, our, our code area, but also because I think it just uh, makes for cleaner code, which is always good. So we're gonna create a new block we're gonna uh, call it delete clone. And we're gonna add an input because the only thing that's gonna be changing between those two times is the number of, is the amount of length that is added. So we can just call this uh, parameter, if you wanna call it an input, uh, which is gonna be our number. It's gonna be number, it's gonna be called added length. So what are we gonna do here? We're going to do basically everything that we do when we touch our snake. And all that's going to change is that this change length by is now going to depend on this uh, parameter, right? What we're passing down. So if you're not understanding, don't worry, just follow along. Um, but basically we are going to be substituting what we had here for just one block. And so it's going to look a lot better, shorter scripts, uh, just cleaner code in general. And as you may guess, we can remove this now. And instead of having to uh, you know, do all the code again, we can just duplicate this, except this time we only want to change the amount of length we add uh, to zero, right? Because we don't want to reward the user when it touches the boundary. So you can, if you can kind of follow the code here, this number that we put in right here is becoming this added length when we perform this these blocks. And then as you can see, this added length is being used in this uh, specific block. So we're gonna do a very similar thing to Sprite 2. So all we have to do is just drag this, hover over our sprite two and let go. And you can see that it does a very, uh, it's gonna be very similar. The only thing that's gonna be a little bit different now, if I can just bring this down here, is that we're not going to be changing a, f a special food count, we're gonna be changing food count. So all we have to do is change this to food count and <clears throat> we're gonna change this, uh, and that's it actually. So we can delete this now we can drag in a delete clone block. This is our own block. Remember the ones in pink are the ones that we have made. And this time we're only gonna change it by one because this is a less reward uh, than the floating one. Um, and you may ask, well, uh, we're only using this once. So what's the advantage? Well, let's say we wanna use it again, right? And so we are actually about to, because we want to make sure this is another thing we're about to add is, is when our flying food hits one of the stationary foods, we actually want it to delete as well. Just adds a little bit more fun to the game. Uh, and so we're gonna say, if touching sprite three, delete clone, do the same thing, except only change our length by zero, right? And so just like that, we have shortened the amount of code we have written and we get the same functionality. So you can see that, uh, what are some good examples? Yeah, like you, like you just saw here, you can see these little white things that go through, they're picking up the stationary foods. Um, and if we looked at the border, we would say the same thing with the flying foods that it would actually delete. Okay, and the next thing I wanted to do in this to, uh, tutorial is to create the mouse follower sprite or the crosshair if you wanna call it. So we're gonna upload a costume um, and we're going to use mouse follower dot SVG. And you can see it's pretty big. Uh, we're actually gonna change the size here. So what we wanna do here is when flag is clicked, 
set size to 20, right? That's a pretty immediate thing we're seeing. So set size to 20%. Um, and the thing we want to do, uh, which you will understand why later, is we want to set our rotation style um, to don't rotate. All right, so what this is going to do is it's basically just going to follow the mouse but smoothly. Um, and so the way we do that is I use this tactic a good amount of times in my videos, but we say forever, point to words, our mouse, and then let's move the distance to the mouse divided by five. So the way we do that is bring in this, and then in the first spot, we want to put the distance to our mouse. The way we go, we, the way we get that is going to sensing, drag in this distance too, and now you can see that this is starting to follow with a cool and kind of smooth animation effect, right? So uh, what we want to do is change it to that when you are actually pressing your mouse down, there is some animation change. And we also don't want it to have a full opacity. We want to add a little bit of a ghost effect. So what we're going to do is drag in an if else block. And we're going to say if mouse is down, we can grab that from sensing. We can go into looks and set our ghost effect to 60. And then when our mouse is not down, so when we're going slower, we can set it to something higher. So it is less seeable. So you can see it's less seeable if we click it becomes slightly more passive. Now the reason it turns into that bright white is because we're actually dragging it in our stage. If we were to full screen or when other people are playing your game um, in the main scratch share page, you can see that won't happen. So the last thing I want to do is make it so that our snake is not pointing towards our mouse, but actually pointing towards the sprite 5 because that moves a lot smoother. So. If I go like this, you can see that it doesn't move immediately. There's a little bit of lag, but it makes it uh, for a smoother game. And you can see that it's less volatile uh, and it's just a better experience for the user. So that's going to be it for episode eight. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you learned some stuff about creating your own blocks. I will see you very soon with episode nine.